Okay, so we know that the title says the addition rule and mutually exclusive events. So before I read it, this time I'm going to write down my general rule. And I'm going to talk about mutually exclusive events before I even read the problem. And if you guys watched the last video, I call the addition rule the or case. So I know that I'm using this rule if I see an or. And I mean, I, even before I read it, I know that I see an or case. So if I'm not told it's the addition rule, if I want a probability and I see or, I know I'm going to apply this rule in some way. And in the last video, I wrote down this general rule. The probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B, the intersection of the two, both of them happening at the same time. Now, um, what happens if A and B um, cannot happen at the same time? Um, if we have what we call mutually exclusive events. So think about sometimes people or students you know, they confuse the concept of mutually exclusive. So be careful, um, but it is like what it sounds like, mutually exclusive, like they're separated, okay? Like they cannot happen at the same time. That's kind of a way that helps me memorize it. But if they are mutually exclusive, they cannot happen at the same time, then this whole thing here becomes zero. The probability of A and B occurring has to be zero, which means that the addition rule gets even simpler as it's just simply P of A plus P of B. There's nothing to subtract because there is no intersection. So when you have your OR case, you know that you're using your addition rule, but you know, are they mutually exclusive events or not? So let's see. I mean, obviously we know they are, it says it, but let's, let's see how we would determine that. Um, a pediatrician's office schedules four different types of appointments. 29% are wellness, so I'm going to write this down. 29% are wellness, so the probability of a wellness visit is 29%, okay? 24 are vaccinations, or 24%, so the probability of a vaccination, I'll just put P of vac, is 24%. Um, 36% are sick visits, so the probability it's a sick visit is 35%, and 12% are sports physicals. I'm just going to write SP for sport physical. Okay. This is all given to me. Um, what is the probability that appointment is for either a wellness check or a sports physical? So, um, you know, uh, <laughs> obviously different doctors do different things, but when I go to a doctor, especially with insurance, you have one particular reason you're going. You're either doing a wellness check and they mark it as such, or you're doing something else. So in this case, wellness check or sports physical. Um, we're going to basically say that you cannot do your wellness check and your sports physical at the same time. They have to be you know, different times. Um, so we have mutually exclusive events. They're not happening at the same time. So we have this particular case. But if I write this out, I want the probability of a wellness visit or a sport physical, SP sport physical for me. If I have the OR case, I always set it up like this. I know that I want the probability of the first uh, wellness plus the probability of the second minus the probability of both. I'm just going to say both. And um, even if you don't memorize this part and you just have the first part, you're still going to get what you need because at the end of the day, I know that they can't both happen at the same time. So this is going to be zero. They are mutually. It's exclusive events. Okay. So that part is zero, which means it's simply just P of wellness, which they gave me to be 0.29 plus P of SP or probability of sports physical, which is 0.12, which is going to give me 0.41 or 41% chance. And again, double check and make sure that, you know, you're writing your answer based on how they ask for it. So typically you'll probably have it in decimal form. You could represent this in percentage form as well, but you know, I think typically with Newton, you see decimal form.